Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Express All Right here on SABC3. Now our next guest is a South African literary icon that's been gracing us with her writing and performing on stage and screen for over 34 years. Now she is well known uh, for her role as a freedom fighter during apartheid, as well as being an award-winning actress, storyteller, poet, playwright, director, and author. Please help me give a very big welcome to the one and only Trinam Sutenklape. Come on, everybody. Wow, 34 oh, years. 34 you. years thank and looking better than ever. 34 years, absolutely. How do you doing manage this? to keep this energy, this passion, the zest for life? You're literally glowing <laughs> right now. You want the secret? Tell us, give I'm it. Just a, telling you, not everybody. Of youth, give it to I us. I live on vitamin G. Oh, vitamin God? Vitamin gratitude. Okay, that too. <laughs> vitamin gratitude, gratitude big is time. The I live on the vitamin G. Hey? Yeah, there's so much to be grateful for. Yeah. You can spend your life moaning, and moaning can become an art form. Yeah. Moaning. That's but true. for me, there's so much to be grateful for. I live on vitamin G. There is such a power in having an attitude of gratitude, and you can see it throughout your career. I mean, you Absolutely. have had a career that spans 34 years. Yes. You are an activist, poet, playwright, director. Yeah. What connected you from the start to storytelling? I think I was connected to poetry, first of all, and I loved performance poetry. Yeah. And um, seeing a traditional imbongi in the Eastern Cape set me off. Wow. And uh, I always thought I would be a writer, and that's about it. I never imagined all the other things that were going to happen in my life. And um, living theatre, full-time theatre, to full-time storytelling was mm. a, like a, a transition that, that changed everything in my life. Yeah. I think um, it became a calling. Storytelling became a calling for me. And I don't only tell stories to the very young ones and to high schools, to universities, to businesses, big businesses. I do all kinds of events through this art of storytelling. It's so yeah. pliable. It's yeah. so flexible. And different languages and the way you express uh, different messages and, 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 and talk to people about something that could have been a serious speech a PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentation, yeah. just plug it into somebody's brain once and for yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. I love it that as, as a child, that was a pivotal moment for you that you never <laughs> let go of. And I think for so many young people, mm -hmm. they have moments like that, but they don't yes. know that they can actually make a life yeah, out of yeah. being passionate about something that they experience Correct. as a child. I'm, I'm very lucky. I know how lucky I am yeah. by being able to do the kind of work that I do. And it brings me so, so much joy and uh, also to be able to inspire others. One of the most asked questions, why do you tell stories? I always re reply same way every week, every month, every year. I tell stories in order to wake up stories in other people. Yeah. If I do that, it's mission accomplished. Yeah, and stories are so important. I think every single one of us as human beings yeah, are innate course. storytellers. Every um, living being. And it's so powerful that you kind of created this and continue to um, make people happy, especially when it comes to children specifically. Why do you yes. think reading is so important in a young child's life and continuing to motivate children to read? I think um, both the telling of the stories or hearing stories yes. or reading, they go hand in hand. Yeah. That, 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 um, that gift of being able to read and write is something that sets you off you know, for, for, for the rest of your life, because no matter how many opportunities are out there, no matter how many of these gadgets come out and then the new one and then the upgraded one, if you can't read, you can't use them. Yeah. So yeah. the art of reading is, is so important. And um, it's like a, the gym to the bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. <laughs> yeah, if they don't like the gym, they, they can't make it. And so if we don't like reading, there's a lot that we cannot achieve yeah. or access information that we need for any career that we want. Exactly. It opens a portal to a whole nother world. That's a fact. You know, That's so that is wonderful. I wish that I'd caught on to that. I only realized in later life yeah. how important it was. Had I begun to have a love for it at a younger age, Age, who knows what could have happened? I think um, uh, children who who have the privilege to be able to to have someone reading to them, igniting that yeah. fire of wanting to read for themselves. Once that fire is ignited, it can never be, yeah. you know, can never be extinguished. Can so it's extremely ever important. Never be extinguished. Yes. Tina Mklope, everybody Woo! on your feel good breakfast show. Jamon, I know Tabiso is so excited. Where's my that son? You're Where's my son? Anyway, he's, he's over 
Listen, Where's Robin, my son? come give you a very big I mean, hug. Really? We are so happy to have <laughs> Lena in studio with us this morning. She's not going anywhere. A little bit yes. later, we're going to catch up with her again alongside Joanne DeVette from McDonald's, where we take a closer look at a global literacy initiative that is oh. making the Happy Meal a lot happier. Yes.